Bonjour, welcome to Paris. Uh, so I'm here in Paris this weekend and uh, doing a couple of things. Uh, I've got a few videos in planned, but for this particular video, I just kind of want to make mention slash announce something that I previously mentioned in my Instagram stories and Twitter, and that is that I have finally switched to Fujifilm. Uh, so yeah, this, this has been a long time coming and it's all started with this camera. This, of course, you guys know that on my channel. This is the Fujifilm X100F. Uh, I've been loving this camera for a long time, picked up in Japan last year. Can you believe it's been almost a year since I've had this? This is mental. Anyway, um, based off my other experiences of shooting with the X-Pro2 and the X-T2 in both Australia and New Zealand, uh, they were kindly loaned to me from Fujifilm Australia. I had an amazing time with that, but I was never really ready to properly switch to Fujifilm. And uh, I knew that something was coming. Uh, I'm, I'm an advocate for checking the rumor sites and I knew that something was coming. So at the point of when I was thinking, you know what, I'm gonna switch to the X-T2. Um, I never fully committed because I was like, there could be another one coming. And that is this guy. This is the Fujifilm X-H1. Uh, now I actually picked this up on launch day and I also filmed a separate video for that of unboxing it and going through some of the specs and some of my thoughts on it. And I didn't publish it, I edited it, but I never published it because I was like, you know what? What am I actually adding to this? What value is this video adding that hasn't been covered from everyone else? So I guess I've, I've kind of postponed this video a little bit um, because I wanted to get to know this camera. I wanted to, to use it, to understand it, to see what my thoughts are and to sort of gather, you know, gather some information and interest for you guys that's beyond just saying, you know, it's an incredible camera that's got amazing video features, 200 megabits per second, it's got inbuilt stabilization, never on any Fujifilm. Uh, all these things, you know, that I could just reel off like a whole load of spiel about this camera that inevitably means nothing if you don't get to know what it's like using it. But I generally just wanted to say, I finally made the switch. I'm over to Fujifilm. I've picked up the 50mm f2 the 23mm f2 and the 50 to 140 uh, f2.8 lens. Um, I'm sort of following this idea of generally trying to shoot in primes for most of the content that I'm creating. Um, I've fallen in love with primes again. Uh, this happened a few years back, but I think now I'm, I'm like really set on, on going for the primes. Ooh, hello. Uh, I just love that, that quality, the sharpness, uh, and Fujifilm, or rather Fujinon, make incredible lenses with intense sharpness. Uh, the apertures on so many of the lenses are pretty large. I mean, the vast majority of them are at least 2.8, uh, but you can find many of them at f2. Uh, they have the whole family of the 23mm, the 35 the 50mm, the 90mm, all f2, all weather sealed, all phenomenal lenses. And they are dinky small, look how small this is. Um, so I'm really jumping into the family of prime lenses and uh, so far I've been really enjoying it. So over the past couple of years I've been falling in love with Fujifilm. Um, I've got a lot of respect for them as a company in the way that they push things as a R&D company rather than a sales company. So they are all about pushing the technology and the usability rather than trying to sell more cameras. Uh, and that really like rings true in their sort of philosophy on things, the way that they update old cameras, they develop new firmware to, you know, just really invigorate the software um, to hardware ratio, more so than say, uh, name the name Sony or Canon cameras. Um, every time an update comes around, it just feels like a new camera. The usability of these cameras, and I feel like I'm rambling with this, but the usability of these cameras is just phenomenal. I really, really enjoy using them. Um, everything just feels right, everything feels enjoyable. And I think a lot of you guys have come to this channel because I've posted Fujifilm stuff. So a lot of you are probably already Fujifilm shooters. And uh, I think you'll agree with me on just how enjoyable these cameras are to use. And that is just paramount. It's paramount to the success of your photography. If you are enjoying what you're doing, of course you'll want to do more. And if you do more, you'll get better at it. So the X-H1, uh, this is primarily marketed as a video focused camera. It's the first from Fujifilm to have that sort of marketing approach. Um, however, I personally see it as my main stills camera. I'm gonna continue using the GH5 for video based work. Uh, I've kind of let go of the idea of having one camera that does everything. Uh, generally, if I'm gonna be doing vlogging and YouTube and photography of that sort of content, I need to have one camera for each. Um, that being said though, the video features of this camera are 
amazing. But I am seeing this as my main, uh, as my primary photography camera. So it's pretty much an X-T2 plus. It's sort of like a, a bumped up upgrade. So think of it like the iPhone you have every other year, uh, you have the S model. So it's like a, a slight upgrade or a bit of a, a reincarnation of an existing model. Uh, so if you already own an X-T2, Personally, this probably isn't the camera to get. The software features on here will most likely come to the X-T2 via a firmware update imminently. Um, I mean, you know, potentially in a few weeks time. It's, yeah, if you, if you already have an X-T2, I'm gonna say point blank, X-H1 probably isn't worth getting it. Now I was at a stage where I was looking to get an X-T2 um, and I came very close to it. And then I saw the rumors and I was like, Nah, I'm gonna wait, I'm gonna wait, I'm gonna wait. And I'm so glad I did. And um, yeah, so this is now my main uh, main body. I am rambling so much, by the way. Um, but I just have all these thoughts that I'm just trying to, you know, execute and just push out. And um, this is a beautiful surrounding. I mean, let me just show you around. Like, this is such nice greenery, leafy places. I'm having dinner in this place in a moment. It's just, oh. I love Paris so much, um, and that's another thing. Like, I just need to need to make the most of, of coming to coming into Europe from London. Like, it's so easy to to do, and it's been four years since I've been in Central Europe. What the hell, like, idiot? Um, but you know, of course, I've been elsewhere around the world. Um, but yeah, I, I really want to come into Europe more often and and explore things. I, I'm rambling again. Oh, this is such a ramble. Um, yeah. All right, hold on a minute. All right, so what are some of the improvements from the X-T2 to the X-H1? So first and foremost, the thing that you will notice most is this is a chunkier camera. It is a bigger grip. It is an overall bigger camera. Um, now it is only slight. It's still very much small compared to a DSLR. Um, and the mirrorless form factor is still evident here. It's a very travel friendly camera. Um, but video wise, this now has a inbuilt image stabilized sensor. The um, EVF on here is a higher resolution than the X-T2. The screen on the back is also a touch screen now, so that's great for tapping to focus and just for like um, slow sort of like transitions between your focus because you can just touch on things rather than using the manual uh, ring on the lens. The main focus is the video. Now let's just talk about some of those video specs. So this does 4K DCI, so this is true 4K, so 4096 by 2160, that is a 17 by 9 aspect ratio, uh, and it shoots in up to 200 megabits per second. Um, so that is a pretty healthy bit rate, that means that you can get a large amount of data per frame of the video, and I've done quite a bit of video with this already, and the footage is gorgeous, it is very, very smooth. The autofocus as well is it's like someone's manually doing it. They're just almost changing the focus ring. Instead of it hunting for things, it just sort of like softens into it and finds it gently. Um, it just feels really smooth and nice. Um, and yeah, the, the video on it is, you know, it's a serious attention from Fujifilm. It's still not as great as the GH5 in terms of video functionality, but it's a definite step in the right direction. Um, and I'm very much excited for, for where that will develop. There's an improvement to the weather ceiling, um, which is kind of ironic for me, because you probably remember a video I released in New Zealand, where I took an X-T2 a little bit too far in the waterfall and sort of destroyed it a little bit. Yeah, uh, I'm not gonna be doing that with this one, uh, especially because this is my camera and not Fujifilm's camera. <laughs> but um, that being said, I think it probably would hold up better in a waterfall. Um, yeah. Oh, there's also, there's Bluetooth uh, connectivity on here now. So this uses low energy Bluetooth, so it can transfer JPEGs automatically to your phone if you have the Fujifilm app. Now I've actually made use of that and it works really well. So it only works with JPEGs rather than with RAW, but if you shoot RAW and JPEG and you're planning to share your images to say Instagram stories, it's really convenient to just open your phone and have your images there from your camera. Um, ready to share and it works as soon as you turn the camera off so it's not like it's working at the same time you do it it's when you're not shooting it then transfers it which is quite nice there's also one little feature that I am so glad they've implemented and I I mean not that I want to take credit for it but it is a huge piece of feedback that I sent to Fujifilm Australia um, and that is between switching from photo to video I was like wouldn't it be cool if when you switched modes 
it retained their settings for each mode. So when you shoot video, you need to have a pretty consistent shutter speed. Um, you also want to have certain picture profiles and you want to have certain um, ISO options and other things like that. But when you shoot photos, generally you want as fast a shutter speed as you can get for the quality, um, you know, if you're capturing static images, but that's not suitable for video. So it was like, wouldn't it be cool if you could have separate modes for each mode or just retain its settings? And this does that. I'm so happy that it does that. I can leave my shutter speed at 1 of a second. I can shoot my video at 24 frames a second. I can switch to photo mode and then my photos come out at the shutter speed that I left them in. I just, I love that functionality. That's so great. Um, yeah, that is a huge feature for me. And already in the past couple of days that I've been shooting in Paris, switching between photo and video, I've actually done a lot more video on this than I have in my GH5 because this is the only camera I've had in my hand and that's been in my bag. It's only when I want to talk to camera that I'll get this out. So yeah, that's a, a nice surprising feature um, that I'm very glad they've uh, introduced. Uh, there is also the new film simulation, which is kind of perfect for video. It's called Eterna. Now, for those of you that don't know, Eterna is based on the old uh, analog film stock from Fujifilm. Uh, so there was a previous one called Eterna. I think it's possibly still made. It's kind of like a, a lower contrast. It's very cinematic looking. It's perfect for grading. Um, and that is also on the X-H1. And I can leave my video on Eterna and I can leave my photos on Classic Chrome um, and just go about my day worry-free and that is that is what I love about a camera it's usability it's how much you have to worry and everything like that all right so I've been nattering away for a little while now uh, I'm gonna head in back to dinner and uh, go and eat something tomorrow is the Paris marathon and that's primarily what I'm here to shoot um, so again this is a personal choice that I've come out here to uh, create some content about the Paris marathon I have got a friend running in the marathon as well which is quite nicely timed um, and I'm gonna test if this X-H1 can handle sports photography. It's kind of the, the prime question a lot of people think about mirrorless. Can it do sports? We're gonna find out tomorrow. I mean, the specs say yes, but it's all about usability.